For those of you who haven't seen it before, this is Opus 40. It was built by my stepfather, Harvey Pite, from nothing. When Harvey came here in 1938, this was a huge pile of rubble, an abandoned stone quarry. He was able to buy this property for 250 bucks. And he started teaching himself how to build the stone because there was no one who was teaching this kind of work then. Uh, and if there had been, if he had been able to study with a master stonemason, he would have learned uh, that a lot of the things that he wanted to do and that he did do were impossible. <laughs> So in the morning I got up, came upstairs, made coffee, walked out on the deck, and was was shocked, was dumbstruck. Uh, it was one of the worst days of my life. There's been a lot of talk about Sandy, but the hurricane before that, that bypassed New York City, came up here and did a lot of damage up here. Actually, it was my wife, Pat. As soon as she saw what had happened that afternoon, she started doing research, making calls. She found Tomas Lips, who was the head of the Stone Foundation in Santa Fe, New Mexico. It was Tomas who really took the lead in putting together a crew that did the work. The board realized that it was not within our scope to uh, financially handle this problem. The board was completely behind the idea that this became our number one priority. We considered a number of things, a crowdfunding campaign, which, which became very successful. One of America's greatest works of art has been damaged and needs your help. Critic Brendan Gill has written, Opus 40 is a cousin of Stonehenge and the long since vanished Hanging Gardens of Babylon. It is the greatest earthwork sculpture I have ever seen. A lot of people in the community really ra rallied to make this repair possible. We had great participation from the arts community. We had some meets and greets and concerts uh, and other, all sorts of events. Uh, Barbara and my mother were very close friends. Yeah, they were best of friends. Harvey was uh, just a funny, sweet man who uh, also taught at Bard, where I went to school. But uh, always working hard and, uh, I mean, what an artist. Look, yeah. what, he, look, look yeah. what he's created. It's unbelievable. The only other thing I have to say is uh, this bozo here uh, showed up uninvited <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he insists on talking. I don't know who he is, but uh, <laughs> he'll come up and say a few words. And it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And it's a, such a remarkable piece of art. We did everything possible to build awareness of the situation. We've set up a fund named after my mother, the Barbara Fight Landscape Fund. For the most part, we were self-funding. However, it would be remiss not to mention great participation from the Townsend Family Foundation, who has become a great friend of Opus 40. We want to make sure that as we go in, you know, deeper into the 21st century, Opus 40, the beauty and the structural integrity of it is provided for. We asked people who were visiting to say something about Opus 40. And to think that just one yeah. man. Yep. Makes it, it, it makes one it. stone at a time. So I'm coming from Mexico, and they have like Pirámides de Mexico and Teotihuacan and all these historic places. And I, it's an honor to be here because it feels I have the same feeling here. I always say to people that the site is the sculpture. 
and yeah. uh, you know people don't really understand what that means but then you see their faces when they come in here and it's just like the light goes on. There's nothing like it and people love to enjoy and walk around the ground, sit on the rocks, explore the different caverns and, um, and the grass is magnificent, the trees, the setting, the mountain views, I mean it's our little special place. This was a beautiful place for us to play. Um, really felt warm, we could really feel the audience, and knowing that that was behind us the whole time was inspiring too. There was some damage done, and it's, um, it really basically washed the earth out from under some of the stone on this end of the environment, and it needs to be replaced. You know, maybe it's something that's never gonna be finished, but it does need to be restored to the way that it was left by the person that made it. That's the first thing we're going to fix is there. You should put a, a level on that. No, it should be absolutely level. And, and when you build it, you've got to keep it so that it never sinks in the back. Next. <laughs> what brings you here? Uh, well, I've always wanted to um, visit here since I ever first ever heard about it. And then Tom asked, said, Could you, would you be interested in coming over and heading up a workshop, so the answer was obvious. <laughs> yes. I'm totally surprised to how bad this backfill is. Uh, Harvey was interacting with quarry people all the time. And they should have told him that you just don't dump the backfill. So the backfill is not going to be dumped. It's going to be constructed this yeah. time. Yeah, it's the way to save it, so it won't happen again. completed, visitors once again enjoy full access to the beauty of Opus 40. What do you think about your crew? Oh, well. Shabby yeah. at best. Yeah, they're American, I'll whip them into shape. We started working on clearing this area out around August. Uh, Tim Smith and a crew uh, came here. Throw them on there and let's just try it medium weight, Robert. Lifted all of the large stones, all of the small stones, with the idea being that we would clear things away so that uh, the next step of the work could be done in the spring. The way we cleared things was pretty much the same methods that they were used to build us originally. And we don't have uh, like hydraulic forklifts and this like that. We manually get the stones and then put straps around them and then power them up and push them to one side or the other. And they're going to build it back the same way it was. The next phase is going to be much more complicated because we're going to be putting these back in and there'll probably be alternating maybe five to ten masons. This was the first thing he built. And he always said that he was going to rebuild this. He wasn't happy with this one. We're doing it for him. Gin pole is a mast, right? And the, you have a boom going out of the base and it sort of swings around. That uh, enables you to pick things up, move them, in, and lower them into place where you need it. It's the most practical way to get material to the wall face where you're building on it. So the pole and the boom uh, should cover, span the whole uh, opening, uh, the whole repair job. 
The cable comes from the bottom of the winding swivel up the side mast through the top swivel, crosses both shifts and back down to the boom. You will see shortly what that looks like. The next step is when, in May, when we're uh, we're going to be coming in with the uh, the main man, Sean Aycock from Wales, is going to be coming in, uh, and our crew, and we're going to start rebuilding this wall. From the start, this was much an art project as it was about construction. We just had no idea how to get it done while staying true to the spirit of Harvey Fight. When it comes down to it, there's only one way to go about reconstructing the wall. That's to bring in the best people you can find and put it back together one stone at a time. They're coming in uh, quartets, if you might say four people coming in. Um, it, working two days and then being replaced by another quartet. I am Fran, I'm from uh, Philly, and I'm a stonemason. Uh, I'm a professional trail builder. So a little bit of everything, all different kinds of stonework. You're a mason? Uh, correct, yes. No, you're not. You're a dry stone waller. Okay, yeah. there we go. Yeah, I'm, on the job, I'm a glutton for punishment. I made an announcement on uh, to our members, the Stone Foundation members. I made an announcement to a dry stone walling group on Facebook. We got a pretty good response. I am a laborer. This is my fourth or fifth time here working on this. Okay. I'm Ethan. From? I'm from uh, Berkshire County. I'm training in uh, masonry at a, the American College of Building Arts. Uh, just finished my first year. You're a mason? No. What are you? I'm just a guy that wanders around. I'm Lydia Noble, and I'm from Shetley in England. Doug Bell from Guelph, Ontario, Canada, middle linebacker. Um, I don't know if you're supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be here. Are you? Yeah. Okay. I was hoping for three weeks. I'm not so sure now. We've had to take down a lot more wall than, uh, than we thought we had to. Fill that gap as level as you can across the two. And then we'll go for trying to put whatever slabs we can manhandle that are down here onto the top of those. No wiggling the rocks. And trying to fill up as much of the space as possible. Yes. That's for the eight. Well, we just we need to lose all of that there. Don't drop it. 
but it's, it's the principle of it is you have a habit of roll plop yep. and then it cracks down the middle. Well, I'm pretty impressed with ourselves. Well, that's good. Oh, there you go. That's, that's progressed onto many other different things. We put uh, this three-piece set we call plug-in feathers. It's a wedge with uh, two semicircular shims in between. Just watch him whatever right here. He's about to do that. What I do is just move stone. Sean, it looks like the work's progressing pretty fast. <laughs> Frustratingly slowly. <laughs> the machinery keeps messing about. If we use the machine, it doesn't work. So we think Harvey's allowing us to put the stones in by yeah. hand, but as soon as we want to use electricity, he's sort of complicating matters. <laughs> we won't run under a load. Now we can operate the thing, but we can only operate it with small stones. That looks small for an engine, though, and it's electric. Well, that's, that's the story of the day, is this damn thing don't work. <laughs> it's the story of the week. If Yeah, but that one, we definitely have to have the hoist operating to be able to lift it, and we don't know that it will. But and it's, we've got to get quite a bit of... It's, it's so close to the boom, though, that we could just use it with the, um, with the hook. Like a tree. Try that. Oh, this isn't bad. Try it with a pallet of a couple, a couple more of those on there. Bearings are not good. Yeah, it, it's working. This thing works. Yeah. I guess the wall's about seven feet tall now. At this height, it's a challenge anywhere you want to look at it. It's been very slow. I mean, we've... we've uh... It's been incredibly fast. <laughs> well, not, not compared to what we're used to. So that it's getting easier and easier every hour that we work. <coughs> Are we making progress? You're making a lot of progress. I mean, it's... Uh... It's mind-boggling how fast to my eyes is going. Doesn't but. seem it to us. It's awkward. That's the problem. It's an awkward situation. You need my help. Let me know. Hoist up. Headed with this one? Right in front. That might do it. Okay, okay, give it a pause there, Michael. There you go, TJ. All right. Okay, TJ, give her a pull. At this point, you don't have to pull, TJ. Gravity will do it. Boom up. Boom up. Push them up. Fine. Awesome. Good.
Thank you. 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 Thank you
Yep. Sure it is. Got it there. Another Harvey moment. Is that actually known as a whale prison? Wow. Alex, battering ram. Yeah, just go on up there. Set it right next to me, Dad. Don't be shy. Yeah. Well done, gentlemen. Is that okay? Have to go in? Is? No. Can you go out? It's all out a little bit. I, how often do you use a battering ram? <laughs> this is about the first job. I've done things like drive machines into walls with planks. How did all your crews do? All oh, the crews, they've been sterling, stupendous, and uh, we've gotten got a lot of work. We everything got more complicated than it should have been, but the quality of and skill of the workers has kept us on schedule. We expected to be finished today. We're going to be finished tomorrow. How about that? So, what do you think of the Yankee Stonewallers? Uh, I think the ones that we've had on this project have been hardworking, keen to learn, and use chisels a bit too much. But then we were concerned in building it nice and secure, so I couldn't stop them. And in the end, I was using a chisel, so maybe I learnt something as well. Thank you.